Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade, and this is How to Happen iOS. Oh, yeah. Boom. It's time for the magical melody generator that is Harmony Bloom, and it is so damn beautiful. I'm going to say let's oge. Hello, welcome to the show. My name is Jade. This is How to Happen. I must hope you're all high. The laptop is going too fast for my own mouth. Slow down. I hope you're all doing well. Everyone doing good. Everyone happy. Everyone peaceful. Everyone got problems. Don't we all? <laughs> what am I saying? Hopefully, you're going to get to chill and listen to this today, what I make out of this and, and how to use this and, and feel good. Because last night, I used this app, made something and used it to go to sleep. And did I sleep good last night? I got a six-hour sleep and I'm just factoring it to this app. So thank you, Mario, the developer, for making this because it's just... Mwah, I'm in love with it. I want to have a relationship with it. Boom. If you're a Wart Warrior, thank you for being a Wart Warrior. Costs you a dollar a month and uh, you, I, you get my eternal love emojis happen in the chat that you can play around with if you remember. And I know I've been saying it for three weeks now that the quiz is 100% happening this week because if it doesn't, I lose my Kahoot account. <laughs> so I have to do it. But that is happening and it's all good because I've got no walk with me this week. So the quiz is happening this week. It is the community quiz. We'll talk about it halfway through the show. Oh, man. Yeah. Six hours sleep. All thanks to this app. Thanks, Thomas, for posting that. Thomas is here. Hello, Thomas Christ. We got Legs 11. Chad Freeman's here. We got uh, Covered by CQ. Hello to you. Sean Chandler, good to see you, my friend. Leela, the rise of dark Lula, is in the house. And uh, Ed B. Myrtle is here too. Who else do I see? I saw Jimmy up the top. There's James. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, I don't think I, I'm sure there's – I see there's more people watching and, and lurking. Tremor Bear's in the house. Good to see you. And, uh, yeah, become a Patreon. Do all that stuff. Do the Patreon. Super stickers, all this stuff. Hello, Ed. C to the E, mate. He's in the house. <laughs> all right. We've got to get into this because it's long. And I'm going to make a bunch of projects today because I want to show you the, the breadth of this app, the depth of this app. It's just beautiful and hopefully give you an understanding of how it works more than you would if you didn't have this show. And uh, you know what? If you don't understand it too, you can still make some really incredible stuff. But I'm going to do my best to help you understand how it all works. And the app we are looking at today is Harmony Bloom, right? So let's jump over. On oh, today's featured artist pinned to the top of the chat is the Indigo Sunsets. Why? Well, they just dropped their brand new album. It's out. There it is, my friends. It's out. Better Late Than Never by the Indigo Sunsets has been released. 12 songs. Boom. Look at that. Well, this is three years in the making and it is out. It is on streaming services. There's a pinned comment up the top. Uh, it's the only place it's not available yet is Spotify, but that's coming there shortly. But yep, yeah, it's out. It's rad. So we're going to celebrate that today by playing another new track from it, which they just dropped yesterday. Awesome stuff. Let's, Oge, let's get over here to Tova to the beat community and take a look at any news or any stuff like this. Imaginando has a uh, BAM on sale and they dropped a massive update last night. Audio Thing has all of their plugins on sale. That's really rad. It's not, is it all of them? Have reduced the price of, of their desktop and iOS. So it's a selection of them. Thank you. I wasn't here. <laughs> now you are. Um, that's very kind of you. Fernando has updated Piano Motifs, another app that just keeps on giving and giving. It's a beautiful app. Uh, for creating piano motifs, piano pieces, if you're not a, such a good pianist. OSC has updated all of their apps and they've dropped them in a bundle as well. Hopefully we'll take a look at those updates because they are significant. A lot of new, a uh, whole new look for the apps, whole new patches, whole new, uh, just a lot of cool stuff. 
Red Shrike's on offer. Uh, this new app just jump, uh, has a beta. So if you want to jump on this beta, jump over here to the Beat community, click on this. You can jump on the public beta of this Gradient Synth. It's really fun. I've been playing around with it. It's pretty neat. Um, up, another update for EG Nodes. Lots of stuff happening, my friends. Sales, bam, on sale, 10 bucks off. There it is from 29 to 19.99. Uh, audio thing, Mantis, things, hand clapper, wires, reels, dials, gong amp, things, springs, noises. So a bunch of them all on sale and a good few dollars off. So about five, five bucks off. That's pretty, five or six bucks off. That's pretty neat. Strummer from Four Pockets, new rack, chameleon, all on sale. Bunch of stuff on sale. Good shit. We're taking a look at Harmony Bloom today. And this thing is just uh, $9.99 if you want to grab it. Uh, it is a MIDI processor. It doesn't make any sound. It sends MIDI to other instruments. It is also available from Mario Nieto's website if you are a user of the PC or the Mac formats. You can buy this as a VST AU uh, as well. And the price is, I do believe, 29, 29 euros. So around 30 bucks US. Um, and it's, yeah, so totally available on uh, all the platforms. You can't go wrong. Choose your poison. 10 bucks on iOS. Nice and cheap. Shall we open up a pro a little demo I made last night and let's see what it sounds like. So we've got a bunch of stuff in here. We've got a nerd synth. We've got a, a, a Spelldozer. We've got a Hilda. We've got a piano tech, uh, a, 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 a piano tech, yeah, and a Mariana bass. And this is just absolutely beautiful. Hello, princess. Goodbye, princess. Just want to get that in before you go. So... Let's bring all this up and let's make some sounds. Let's hear what this thing can do. You ready? Let's oge.
All right, so beautiful. Now that's a little bit complex, this one. There's a lot going on in there. Let me quickly open up something that I uh, made, as I said, I made last night before I went to bed in about three minutes, right? To just go to sleep. Very simple. Two pieces. Look at this. And a bit of reverb on both of these instru instruments, Hilda, and um, we've got a piano tech and just two of these. And this was what I went to bed to last night. Just amazing. So we've got a piano. Let's take out all the reverb. Take out the reverb of this Hilda. When you hit stop, it's still got that lovely tail going on. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Let's uh, clear this out of here. And we're going to open it up as a standalone first to show you just one thing in there. And then we'll be using the rest of it today in here in AUM and in Logic Pro because it works in Logic, in all your doors, all that kind of stuff. So here it is as a standalone version. And the reason I'm showing you it as a standalone is only for one thing. It's, it runs exactly the same as it would as a uh, AUV3, so it's a plug-in, but there's this extra little button up the top here, and that is this. Because the, you can't send any of the sounds that it makes into an instrument as a standalone, you can select a couple of instruments. You've got like the, this guitar. So if I hit play down the bottom here, you've got a guitar a glass, a piano, and a mute. So there are some sounds built in here and we can extend the notes. Right, so now that we've covered that, that's all right. <laughs> All I wanted to show you was that in the standalone version, and you've got this little uh, download thing here, if you, oh, save preset, that's all still the same. That's the only thing that's missing when you use it as a plugin. So let's kill this. We don't need it. We want to come back over here to AUM. And the way we're going to load this today is as a MIDI processor. So it's got its own MIDI processor track, which it can send MIDI data to an instrument. So we'll start off today, like most things, just with a piano. Because if you can't get a piano sounding good, then give up. <laughs> so we want to put Harmony Bloom in here. And of course, we want to send all of the notes out. So you've got an in and out. And we want to send these notes out to Piano Tech. So now it is connected. So anything that is played via Harmony, uh, Harmony Bloom will go to that piano. Also, I want to click up here and add my keyboard. So where it says MIDI inputs, I want to add my Arturia keyboard so I can control notes as well. Let's make this full screen and show you how this thing works. Okay, Whew. here we go. At any time, you can click this little Harmony Bloom logo up here and it'll take you to the support page, if you like, videos on Mario's YouTube channel. And let me tell you, if you need any help with this, go over to Mario's channel. He's, he does live streams almost every two days, just for two hours of him just 
generating stuff and making stuff. And it's just a beautiful thing to sit there and just watch him for two hours. He, he He's the developer and he's just jamming for two hours. You know, it's not every day, but it's I've been doing it for the last week and I've got so much from it. He's a very creative, very talented human being. So you can go over to his channel there. You can contact him if there's a bug or anything. Please always contact your developer. Don't leave a review on the App Store. It's silly. And his website. So that is just by clicking up that button there. See this button here? This is going to get you out of a lot of trouble. This is the reset button. Whenever you click this, so if I load a preset up here, whenever I click the reset button up here, it resets to all the default settings. Everything is done. Back to back to default. And if we hit play now, I've got to connect this. So see, I've made my first mistake. Notice that I hit play on the transport and nothing happened. Why is that? Well, like most apps, you need to sync them up to your door. And where is that sync button? It is down here. See the little link button? It looks like a little key link. If I click that now and you'll notice the play button gets grayed out. So that means I can control the play from up here. And now we're off. Now this will just keep going around and around. Hit stop up here and our project stops. Easy as. Here is where we find our presets. You can save your own presets. You get a nice little selection of stuff in here. They're all in a root key of C and all in chromatic. And they, they tell you you can set the author for your own presets. To save a preset, you can just hit the little save button. It lets you uh, create your author's name, your, your project name, your preset name, your author's name, and save it. And that'll save it in a little section made for your own presets. You can flick through presets by doing left and right buttons. You've also got a randomization. And how that randomization works up here is it's selecting one of the presets that is in here. It's not just randomizing all the features, it's choosing a preset for you. <laughs> Look at that, it's just beautiful. Okay, so hit the reset, everything comes back to how you first loaded it. So we've gone through presets, you can click here to get to presets as well. You've got an undo and a redo, nice. We've got a little edit button. Let's talk about the edit button before we get into anything else. When you click it, you'll notice you get this little toolbar drop down. This lets you reset to factory colors. You can change the background. You can go in here and you can go ape shit. Look at this. You can, <laughs> you can change the colors to anything you like. So this is the background. You've got your red, green, so your sections down here. Uh, and then you have your main section, which is the actual text, so you can go down and do all black. I mean, you can get nuts, so you can't see jack shit, right? You can go totally nuts and create your own colors for each uh, one that each, you know, uh, version of this you have open if you've got multiples of them. Again, you can reset colors by clicking there, goes back. I kind of like doing a really dark black background, heading down there, getting dark, getting in and doing a nice, uh, Color up here, something really bright. That's pretty cool, All right? So it's totally up to you. You can do whatever you want. You have this little spectator mode. So once you've created something, you can, so you click this little edit section and then you can go into spectator mode. And then when you start playing, you've got this wonderful little spectator mode that you can control live and lose all the all the background noise and have fun with it, yeah? To get out of spectator mode, just click the off button and you're good. Uh, you can, res anytime you want to go back, uh, so you, if you want to save this skin, you like this skin, every time you want to open up this program and have it like open at this color, you can hit default skin. Now, every time I open up Harmony Bloom, this color will be my default. Or I can go back to reset and now this will be my default. So plenty of options in there to make it look pretty how you want it to look. 
Uh, hello, Damien. Is it better than Fuji? <laughs> hey, that, I, I got no opinion on that because they're, they're different apps. They do different things. You know, I don't, I don't ever like to think something's better than the other. I think they, they both do different things that complement. You know what I'm saying? Um, settings are pretty simple up the top here. You can show notes off uh, or on, show lines or show orbits. Now, when you turn notes on, the little dots here change to the notes so you can see the notes that are being played. Let's reset this. So we're currently playing a C chromatic scale from C all the C3 all the way to C6. So we're playing. Or you can turn off those notes and go back to using the dots if you like. So plenty of options for turning on and off the lines. You can show the lines, show the orbits. Depends if you want to go into your, uh, you know, your screen mode and make it look a little bit prettier. Up to you. You can do whatever you want. Let's turn these back on. We'll leave the dots on for now. Okay, so we've covered the top bar completely. Let's talk uh, just underneath and get to our note collection, root and scale. So you can go in here and choose your note collection. So these are like basically your chord selection for all the notes and you have a scale. So if I go in here and choose and look at, man, there's a lot of scales in here. Plus only recently added has been this custom scale. So you can choose a custom scale, go in and edit it and Draw in your own scale. If that's what you want to do, have at it. Make up your own scale. Make up a scale that doesn't even make sense. I don't care. It's your music. You do what you want. But you've got all this stuff. So if I choose a major, hello, Kim. If I choose a major scale, then if we turn on our notes down here, you will see all these notes will go into our major scale. So you can't fuck up, can you? Because we've got a scale. You've got a root note. You can choose whatever you want just by clicking on here. You get a drop down box and you can choose a D, whatever you want. You've got all of the notes in there. Now you notice every single option on here has a die next to it. So every single thing can be randomized. Bang, random, random, random. Let's hit play. So we're playing a major, a minor major seventh scale with an Add ninth note collection to a C sharp. Possibilities are utterly effing endless. Let's just go back to a C, bring this to a major, and you can hear when you change. Let's go to a minor seven. We'll do a, a minor add ninth here. Okay. What we also have is an overall dice to randomize everything. Remember, reset is your friend because <laughs> it brings everything back to normal. You can start again if you get a bit lost and go crazy. We will touch on these sections in here shortly, just under the dice. These are for your own customization. You can go in and individually customize all the stuff that's in here. All right, so what we need to talk about now is our... Now, I do believe that the correct term... <laughs> The correct term is uh, for these is our because uh, we all right. Let's let's focus on all right. We'll start over with our notes. Let's talk about our notes, and then we'll we'll come back to our uh, to our circle in the middle. Currently, there's 16 notes in this pattern. You can have up to 
you can have all the way up to, I think it's 82, is that right? 82 notes. That is the maximum notes you can have. Now there's so many notes in this piece right now that they're, they've all, you can see what's happening here. We're playing a just B5, we're playing all the same notes on each strike. Let's pull this down while it's playing. You can go all the way down to one note, if you like. I'm just gonna turn on the, uh, the dots. So you can just have one note floating around, or two notes, so you're one in the center and one out there. You've got little arrows here as well, so you can go up note by note. All right, now that we've got some notes playing here, let's just bounce over here to the circle and talk about what's going on here. We know these are the notes. There's, you can see there's 10 of them. It's running through them every time it hits this trigger bar. These are called trigger bars right here. And you can have as many as will fit in this circle. So every time one of these dots passes through a trigger bar, it is gonna trigger notes. Let's bring the notes back down to one. Or two, yeah. So you can see by adding our uh, trigger bars, we're starting to get a rhythm here. We can fill all of them up. Add some notes. Okay, so at the moment, these notes are all being played very, very short. Underneath our number of notes, we can change the duration of this. Perfect for strings or even a piano. Let's bring this up so you can drag this up. And now we've got some foot pedal on there. We've got some uh, sustain on there. Remember, everything can be randomized. Underneath our duration, we have the option to add a loop length. We're currently on four. The higher you go, the slower the piece is going to play in time with our BPM that we are set to up here. So if we bring this all the way down to one, things can get a little bit cray cray. You can go all the way down to Look how slow this is, 128. Really good for drones and stuff if you slow things down, right? So, let's bring this up a bit. Stop it for a second. Also, um, put something simple like, I don't know, like three blind mice. What can you do with that? Well, uh, I'm not making three blind mice. <laughs> so, um, so probability. Let's talk about probability. At the moment, it's set to 100, which means every time one of these dots passes through our trigger bar, one of these bars, it gets triggered. So this dot will get triggered when it goes through there every time. So you can see it. They're all getting triggered when they hit these bars. If we remove some bars from here. Let's just do a cross, yeah? This is a really nice way to get an even pattern. 
Now with probability, when I turn this down, there now is a 29% chance that a note will play once it crosses these trigger bars. This is great for drones, right? See how they're all passing through and hardly anything's playing? Every now and again, something's going to play. If we put this up a bit higher, 50%. So it's got half a chance. Every dot has half a chance of playing once it crosses through a trigger line. So our tempo is currently set to whatever the door is, right? We can turn off that at any time if we want by unsyncing over here. And now we should be able to, I think that's right. Now we can go in here, we can change the tempo while it's in the door. Or we can reconnect. Let's bring this back. There we go, 120. There you go. So we've covered this side. This is where, now this is just the simple stuff. Now it gets very interesting over here. This is where things get cray cray. So let's reset everything. All I'm gonna do is turn up the duration of the notes so they're playing full. All right? And let's talk about this section, the cue offset. Very important section here. When you click on it, you are given all these options. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, and it goes all the way up to one, 1,024. Let's show you what happens when we hit one, one. Basically, you are given a chord. So when I hit play now, that is playing a chromatic chord. Let's do something like this. Let's do a major and a major nine chord structure for a scale of major. So now every time it goes through, there's a chord with 16 notes in it. We can bring down these notes to eight, and that's a much more pleasing sound, yeah? Because there's not so many notes in there. Nice, beautiful chord. And we can put in some extra lines in here, our trigger bars. And you'll notice each time it plays, the chords are slightly varied. But where it gets interesting, let's just slow down this loop to about eight. So now it's much slower, right? As you change the Q offset and get more numbers, add more numbers, watch this. Watch the pattern change. So now, let me just explain. So every time you add something to the Q offset, the spacing between the keys, between the notes being played gets wider. Think about it like this. On a keyboard, you play a, a chord and some chords you play wider chords, right? You, you would play like a simple chord here, but there are variations of that that are wider, more spaced out chords, but they're the same chord. That is what's happening here when we add more to the Q offset. We're spacing out. So you can see when we go between one, and two, the notes are more spread out. And listen to the difference between the notes, right? Let's change it and spread them out. Let's spread them out even further. And you'll see the geometric shape changes because the dots can't fit in the circle. They actually, they actually can't fit in here, so they start creating these beautiful geometric shapes. Oops, wrong camera. Now, if we take it to number four, watch. We're still getting all these notes being hit. They're just more spaced out. And as we get higher, the notes are getting so spaced out that we're starting to get a pattern. Beautiful. You could start a song with this. Mm -hmm.
Beautiful. Let's try a cue off set of six. Even more spaced out. And as we get higher, and remember, we're only using four of these cross trigger bars. You can put more in. And all of a sudden, Remember, at any time we can change the collection of notes here to a major seven. Into a major scale. Let's move up to an eight. Let's remove some of these transport bars, these trigger bars. Let's go crazy, let's go up to a 16. Let's go 100% nuts, 256. Oh, wow. Now remember, we haven't touched anything over here yet. We can change the loop, the, the speed. If we change the speed again to something really slow, check this out. Just beautiful. Here it comes. So we'll bring this back to uh, an eight. Let's take this all the way to 1024. And look, it's almost back to being at one. Okay. So these Q offset, you've got all the way up here and it starts at one, one, and this all the way at 10124 is pretty much back to one. But let's talk about how crazy this can get with the F offset under here. So this is just amazing. What the F offset does is it basically adds randomization to it. So it becomes an evolving piece of music. <laughs> get ready to have your mind blown, folks. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. So as I add, let's just start this playing. We've got our notes. I'm going to start lifting the cue offset and watch how the tail starts to bend. It's up to four. And as I add more to it, see how it's bending? And I add more. Let's add some more. But if I just grab here and drag, watch what happens. Watch the geometric shapes appear. Oops. So we're at a 0.436. I can randomize this at any time. Hey, Michael. Now we're still just on a one Q offset here. Let's change this to a six. Shit can get really crazy. If we speed this up, I'm going to stop this and I want you to watch the shape over time.
Can you see it of moving? It is now in an evolving state. It is generating its own. It is evolving into different geometric shapes. It's just fucking amazing. <laughs> So what is happening here? So this F offset is called the free offset. Basically what it is doing, this is the Q offset. So this is quantizing, right? So what we'll do, if we set this back, so at any time too, you can hold down, hold your finger down and you'll get a bunch of things. So you can reset the value. So I can hold down, reset value to zero. So with the Q offset, when I change this, this is quantizing, right? So you can see it's quantizing. It's still in time. Everything's still in time and then what's happening when I'm using this F offset this is the free offset it adjusts the difference between the notes freely unlike the quantized uh, control so you still have quantization there but it's taking the uh, the points and freely moving them around a little bit so that's how you're getting this generative stuff. And underneath here is the next one we're going to talk about. This is the S offset. This is the speed offset. And this controls the timing between the notes. As, and, and to show you how this works uh, better, let's make let's set this back to 1-1. One, one. And I'm going to lift this up. So these can all go in the... In, uh, in the uh, plus or the negative, right? So it can go up to all the way up to one, one or m minus one. So let's hit play. Now currently it's set to one and you can see it spreading out. It's actually spreading out. But if I start bringing this down into the minus, let's bring this back down to the minus. So now it's it's minus speed. Sorry, I'm, I'm so lost here at the moment. Just give me a second. Hold down. I'm supposed to be doing this here. Let's uh, go back, hit play. So this is the offset. Let me show you the offset. So as we bring this forward or up, you can see the notes go from uh, inside out. But if I go into the minus, it goes the opposite way. Watch. So, oops, what am I talking about? So our speed determines the speed of the uh, offset here, the uh, free run. And lastly, we have our E. This is our even offset. Even offset delays even notes. Uh, so it's really useful for creating swing stuff. And watch what happens when I do this. Oops, let's do it. Use my finger. Look how it's, it moves all these notes out. Let's slow this down even further. The possibilities are just endless with this thing. Now, even if this one, watch it evolve. It's evolving before your eyes. It's literally moving, evolving. And where things get beautiful is just by adding, I don't know, some kind of reverb, and then you get. Okay, let's have a pause for a second. I did say this is going to go a little bit long today because I want to cover all of this as clear as possible. We are at our halfway point today. It is uh, this time we're going to do it. So we're going to run our ad 
ad has been run. If you want to avoid the ad, you can become a premium subscriber with YouTube or you can just wait, skip the ad, come back. And while we're waiting for that to all happen, I can let you know what's going on here on the channel. Tomorrow, we're taking a look at this thing. It's called Axon 3. It's a neural net drum synth. Very clever, very interesting. Uh, using neural net technology to create drums, drum patterns, drum sounds. It's very fascinating, yes, always. Uh, the day after we are taking a look at uh, this baby right here is Bleece's multiband compressor. <laughs> it just takes your sound and turns it into something. It's more than a compressor, let me tell you that. It's it's like a distortion, loudness, um, crunch power machine it's it's very fascinating again uh and friday thursday your time there's no interview this week but there's something very special happening this week i have a very special guest coming on and we're going to talk about stuff you'll have to wait to see what is happening for that show but in the day after that we're taking a look at bass hammer by nembrini it's a fantastic bass amp for your bass needs all right, let's get back to this and let's uh, delve into the rest of, because at the moment we've just been playing with the player. So it's just generating these chords as we program them in and, and that's it, right? So we can go in here, change the probability. Let's just do something really random. Let's go in here and uh, we'll move our offset to sixth. We'll pull the probability down so not every note's going to get hit. Um, let's add a random amount of notes, like nine. We'll bring out uh, this S offset. Let's take this up here, somewhere like there. E offset will bring down a little bit. Let's hit play. So, so not every note now is being hit. There's a 49% of a note being hit once it crosses through one of these sections. Let's add another reverb on there for fun. And we'll change the scale to a minor. All right, so that's all fine and dandy. But I want to control this. I want to play the notes that go into this. Well, you can. So this gets even deeper. At the moment, it is just playing what we are telling it. These, This chord selection, this note selection, and this scale and this root note. But we have options to play in with a keyboard. So I've got a keyboard here that's connected. And you can go up here and see this little arrow up the top, I'll show you just here. If you activate this, this allows you to go in and play and take over and play the chords on your, uh, on your actual keyboard and have control over what chords are being, what uh, notes within the chord are being played, right? And you can see this, see down here, we have a, and I haven't covered all this yet, but we're getting here, the minimum, note minimum and note maximum. If I hold down a chord, you can see the notes are changing. See how they're changing down there? So I'm playing my keyboard. I'm hitting notes. So now if I hit play, there's no sound. Or well, there is. So it's looking for the notes that I'm playing on my keyboard. Let's speed this up a bit so you can see what's happening. In fact, let's do this. Let's take out some of this reverb. So see how it's not playing at all? As soon as I hold down a note.
now red and it stops when I stop playing. How is that happening? So there's two ways you can input key keyboard notes in here. One of them is this, when you click on this little circle up here, this takes over the, so you can see this is now muted out. I can't click on it because this is turned on. When I turn that off, I can choose the uh, notes that are in this chord progression. But as soon as this is on, the keyboard overrides. But let me show you this. If I hit, hit these chords now, see how nothing's happening? It's, it's not, but you can see down the bottom, pay attention down here, right? Right down the bottom here. When I play the chords, you can see they're changing. You can see G2, they're actually changing, but no sound is happening. So how do we make sound happen? Well, there's a little keyboard down the bottom here. When I turn that on, it brings up this keyboard and now, What you'll also notice is every time I'm holding down keys, it's re-triggering. See how it's, it'll start again each time? You can stop that too, because down the bottom here, there's a re-trigger button. If I turn this off, now, as soon as I hit some keys, the pattern will start moving and I can change chords and it won't re-trigger every time. Let's slow it down a little bit. So it's got a bit more, uh, Let's just make things a little less crazy. So you notice when I take my fingers off the keys, it stops, but it it doesn't start over again because it's not re-triggering. It just continues on with the pattern that it has. Let's reset it. Right, so you got complete control. Now, if I turn off, while we're using the keyboard, if I turn this off, all that is gonna be controlled now is the root note, okay? So this is turned off. So this kind of works like it's a, it's a chord manager. But if I turn that off and we're just using this down here, I don't need to play chords. Yes, of course, you can store anything you like. You have a, a save, yes, Kim, up here. There's your save. Name it what you want to call it. Put your author's name. I'm Jade. La la la. I'm going to call this a demo. Hit save. And guess what? Demo is now in my list. Where is it? We uh, scroll. There it is. So it is now there for me to grab any time. Double click. I can go. So here's one of the presets in here. Let's hit uh, play. We'll turn off the keyboard and. And now if I load my demo here, there it is. So remember with a, when you save a preset, you can save it to use the keyboard or not use the keyboard. So this is back using the keyboard. And yes, you can go backwards if you want as well. There's a little uh, backwards thing here. Let's turn off the keyboard and let it play itself. So now when I hit play, we're going backwards. So the other thing too, <laughs> now we're going backwards or we click this and we're going forwards now. Let's pick a different scale. Let's pick a crazy scale, like a Japanese scale. And uh, I don't know, a... Uh... Also, you'll notice down here we have a note minimum and a note maximum. You can go in here and change the note. Now you'll see, let's... Uh... 
You see, see how I'm changing this and both of them are moving, right? That is because they are linked. Anywhere you see a link here, like over here, if I unlink it now, I can change them individually so that you can make a longer selection of notes and then link them back up. And when you change, so there's that. And the same, this is for velocity. So you can do the same for velocity. We can bring the velocities up. Also, underneath here, we have a transpose. So you can transpose this whole piece here down two octaves. One octave, or you can go all the way up to twenty uh, to uh, two octaves up, which is way beyond the scale of things right now. Let's uh, do 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 do. do. So you can see as we go up here, it's way out of there. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything. The last thing you have here is called the MIDI capture. What's this good for? This is good for if you just want to capture some notes and then save them and then load them into a door. So if I hit play, I just say I make something I like. Let's uh, do something random. Oh, the other one I didn't tell you about is the G offset. So the G offset is a, a global offset. This shifts everything. So let's go back and uh, show you. If I change this global offset, it just shifts everything like you're moving uh, everything along. You can go all the way. So when I start this now, let's uh, go to, a, let's show you this this way. See how when I move this global offset, it's moving the start point. So when I hit play now, it's going to start there. Every time I stop and hit play, it's going to start there. You can decide where you want this to start with your, with your global offset. Yeah. So much stuff you can do. It's just crazy. Let's extend these notes. I just love turning this up and watching the shapes change. Watch this. And you can keep going until you find a shape. Look at that, that you like. Let's keep going up with the F offset. It's just, it's ridiculously nice. So I've altered the speed offset now and this as we let it go, the shape's changing. It will change over time. Look at it changing. It's just... So if I like these notes, what I can do is I can MIDI capture them. I can actually turn this on. And it will say play door to capture MIDI. And if I hit play, it's capturing the MIDI now down here. And if I stop this, now I can send this MIDI to a folder. I can save this on my iCloud drive, save this to my downloads folder, give it a name, whatever I want to call it, uh, new MIDI. Is that right? Move it. 
And now if I go over to my folders in my downloads folder, guess what is in there? There is a lovely new MIDI file that I can drag in and open anywhere I want. Let's take this over to Audio Share, and we'll open it up in Audio Share just to show you that it is actual MIDI. Oh, it didn't save any. I don't know why that didn't work, but it normally works. I've probably fucking done something stupid there because I'm a dickhead. Um, but you can save your MIDI, save you, so you can drag that into another door, whatever you like. The last thing we'll cover is let's uh, do a reset, one more reset, and show you what these do up here. So you can actually go in yourself. In instead of fucking around with the probability, you can go in here and edit these yourself. If we click on this, notice how all these dots get lit up. Well, now I can select one and then turn it off. I can select another one here and turn it off. I can go in here and turn this one off. And now certain notes won't play. You can add notes back. So I can select this and add a note back, delete a note. You can randomize. So you never know what's going to be uh, what's going to be on and off. So you can see here which ones are playing. It's only got a few of them. If we hit random. And if you want to reset them, reset and all the notes are back. So pretty standard. But you've got the power to go in and create your own like randomization in there as well. Listen to that, it's just sick. So there are presets. Let's run through some presets, show you some presets. And uh, they're pretty wild. I'm just going to skip through the presets. So these are a little bit weird, yeah? <laughs> They're a little bit weird. And you're probably not going to use them for stuff. But they do show you how you can uh, make some pretty crazy stuff. Oh, Thomas is out of here, so uh, he's got to get out a bit early, no problem. I knew I was going to go a little bit late today, so hopefully you're back in time for Pete's. Thanks, Thomas, for all you do. We love you lots. All right, the last thing to do is to make something with this thing, isn't it? I think I've covered everything. So hopefully you've got an understanding of it. The best way is to experiment, play around with it, mess around. The instruction manual is really good too. Uh, let me show you that. So you can get to the instruction manual from the website and you can find that through here. If we click on here, go to support, it'll take you to a Mario support page and right up the top has a manual to download and look at that. You've got everything nice and simply broken up like I explained it. The top bar, the, the uh, colours, changing your colours, the main section, everything broken down with numbers and letters, the keyboard, the play, pause, re-triggering, all of that, spectator mode, and uh, extra features which we'll, we'll do last. We'll have a look, which is just holding down on anything, right? So if you hold down on any of these, you're presented with this menu here that says reset value, learn MIDI assignment, add to global randomization, keep on preset switch, no active. So you've got some stuff in here as 
Well, I don't at the moment, Ed, but maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's make something. Let's show you how easy it is to actually make something. Okay, so we'll clear this out. I'm going to load up a MIDI section. I'm going to load up four sections here to put some lovely sounds in. We're going to load up a Harmony Bloom in here. And what I'm going to do is select the scale that we're going to run by. And we're going to do a minor scale over here. We're going to start with a minor seven. And we'll do it in the key of F sharp. Okay. So this is our key. We're ready to go. We'll start with the piano. In fact, no, let's start with a drone. Let's start with a drone. Something, and I'm going to use Hilda because Hilda's got some really nice drones in there. And we're going to send this out to Hilda. Go into Hilda, and uh, this is by Bram Bros, Hilda, Bram, Bram Boss. And they have some wonderful drone things in here. So let's find a, what have we got? Oh. It's kind of fun. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is turn down the probability because I don't want every note to play because it's a drone. So let's turn it way down. Let's bring our offset to something like a, a six. We'll get something evolving. We'll make sure our note duration's turned up. So straight away, we're looking for a drone. We want to bring it down, make it deeper. So let's use the octave. Still running a bit fast for me. So let's bring this down to an eighth. Now watch, this pattern will evolve as it goes on. So this is shifting, doing its thing. Of course, we're going to need some reverb. Let's get dirty with Stellavox. And we'll use a, uh, a crystalline glacier. Okay, we got it. We got the beginning. We got a drone. So, how do we make this easy? Well, I'm now going to copy this. I'm going to hold down on it and select it, create a new spot, hold down and paste, copy this in. So this is a complete copy of the one above. And then from there, we can send this to a piano next and start evolving this sound because look at these. Let me show you. Because I've done a copy of it, both of these are exactly the same. See them next to each other? Well, they're kind of. Because they're evolving, they're not the same. They're a little bit behind each other. But if I go back and stop this, go back to the start, see how they've started exactly the same, right? Anyway, we've got our first one. We want to put a piano in here. And we want to send this second one here, this one, to our piano. We could leave this and it's still going to do something interesting, but let's change the offsets to a 16. We'll put up the probability. But let's put the octave up. 
Ooh, that was nice. How's that randomization? We'll put an L tether on here so it's not as crazy. There we go. This thing is beautiful for creating like soundscapes and oh, it's so sweet. Okay, we're going to create something else. So again, I'm going to copy this, hold down, select it, create a new slot, hold down and copy there. Then go in and immediately turn off the input because I copied it, right? Now we've got to find another instrument. Let's find, let's find something. What about a factory? I haven't used factory for a while. We'll send this out to factory. Just gonna mute this. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my God. Let's hear what's going on here with this. We'll transpose it up a bit. Hey, this sounds fun. Let's add a Stella Vox to this. We can we we can afford to do some uh, interesting stuff with this. We'll change this to like a ten. Hmm. Here we go. We're off. Let's change the amount of notes. Let's hit random. Nine notes. Spelldozer, you guys want Spelldozer? We'll close out with Spelldozer. It's beautiful. So we're going to copy this again to keep it all in the same key. And let's keep spell dozer. Here's our spell dozer. Let's make it a little bit more predictable spell dozer. So we'll, we'll bring the offset back to one. Let's clear it all back to the start. And now... Let's just add some nice chords. Here we go. Maybe slow it down a bit. Make the eight.
for some reason it was out of out of it was in the wrong uh, root note. Is it going to work? Just keep it simple. Now the beautiful thing, one thing, other thing I want to explain, when you're using drums and stuff, when you're adding drums to it, let's just mute both of these. Um, when you are using this F offset, and uh, eventually notes will come around and get back to the start. So they will, a lot of the time, get back to where they need to and re-sync up. It's a... Really fascinating to watch them, watch them work, you know. And then to go in and change individual ones to different chord structures, like we've changed this to a minor ninth. We'll change this one to a minor scale. And this one to a... Remember, you can control all of these with a keyboard at the same time, you know? It's just fucking beautiful, isn't it? All right, so there it is. This is uh, Harmony Bloom. It's a beautiful, beautiful app. Um, $10 on the App Store, $29.99 on uh, Mac and uh, your Windows uh, system if you want to get it that way. Um, so much exploration. I mean, even just taking a simple piano piece. Let's do that quickly. One, line, oh, I want to save this. <laughs> I like saving these little projects. Uh, demo show. Done. Even just simply loading up a piano, it just 
last night I was just med- meddling around with it and some of the stuff that was just coming out with no effects on um, was just beautiful piano pieces like you would expect somebody be- to be playing. The thing is, what I I really love doing is using this offset, dragging your finger until you get a shape. Like that. What? As soon as you change that speed offset, you can really see the shape changing. And it all depends on how many, remember, you're controlling this by how many markers you have in here on how, what your rhythms. I could sit here absolutely mesmerised by this thing for hours. <laughs> In fact, I have. And that's how we've got to this stage. All right, let's get out of here. Thank you for your patience today. If you've watched all the way to the end, well done. You've done better than most people because, uh, you know, it's a, a long tutorial. There's a lot in there to get. But, you know, at the end of the day, don't really have to fully understand everything. You can just get in there and start messing around with it. Everything is kind of self-explanatory if you just kind of go through the start of this tutorial. As I said, jump over to Mario's uh, YouTube channel. He's got plenty of tutorials there. Watch how the, the actual developer makes it. It just blows your mind. He's very, very creative. And it is $10. So, rad. Tomorrow we're taking a look at uh, Axon 3. It is a drum machine with a neural net engine in it, and that's going to be cool as well. But today we are closing out with the brand new single from the Indigo Sunsets. They just dropped their new album today. It's available. Pinned comment. It's, it's taking to Song Whip. You can go grab the album there. It's all good. 
Uh, this is the single they just dropped last night called Waiting for Tomorrow. It's really sick. Reminder, this Thursday, no interview, but someone very special coming on the show. It's going to be a good show. Lots of information and a chance for you to ask questions that you might want answered about stuff. All right, this is the Indigo Sunsets. Waiting for Tomorrow. Remember, stay awake. Do the things that make you happy and mistakes make you better. And we'll all rise together. This is the Indigo Sunsets. Waiting for Tomorrow. Let's ooja.
up in about 30 minutes. See you later, guys.